Europa is one of the weirdest moons in our solar system. For decades, this Jupiter moon has sat undisturbed and quite out of sight for the public. And that's for good reason. It's about 90% the size of Earth's moon and makes up just one of Jupiter's 79 total moons. At first glance, it's not too attractive either, at least in terms of its beige coloring, valleys, and lack of any significant craters. Or, well, that's what we thought for years. Although Europa has been known for hundreds of years, there really hadn't been any popular opinions or well-known aspects until the late 1900s. Suddenly, books, movies, art, and much more painted an exciting picture of Europa. Literally, the 1970s launches of Voyagers 1 and 2 brought some great details of Europa back to the NASA scientists on Earth. Primarily focusing on Jupiter, these spacecrafts collected information on all four significant Galilean moons, including Europa. The smallest of the four, Europa, was and continues to be weird. Nevertheless, from the results of the Voyager flybys, NASA learned a few things. Some odd things. Turns out Europa, although it's the smallest of the Galilean moons, stood out in its own way. Even with its similarity in size to our moon, it holds the smoothest surface of any known solid object in the entire solar system. Europa is also much younger than previously expected, at least its surface, that is. After all, the moon's expected to be around 4.5 billion years old, or at least the same age as Jupiter. But weirdly enough, its surface isn't that old. It's not even close. The smoothness and lack of any significant craters, volcanoes, or many abnormalities pointed towards an oddity, a young surface. Compared to the other Galilean moons, which have at least some portions of their surfaces being billions of years old, or at least hundreds of millions, Europa's looks like a baby. And with the Voyager flyby, all this information suggested that it might be because Europa's surface isn't even its primary feature. Instead, NASA's intelligence pointed towards a water ocean. Yeah, a liquid ocean made of water on a Galilean moon. The plot thickens, both in real life and books. The sudden discovery pushed hundreds of authors to write stories about the extraterrestrial life living in Europa's oceans, which we didn't encounter with the Voyager flights. Out of nowhere, this figuratively tiny moon became an overnight hit. Europa quickly became number one on places where other life could exist. After all, it has water. Or at least, it probably does. That's where we tie in NASA's recent discovery. Through the Hubble Space Telescope, NASA researchers discovered a massive amount of water vapor on Europa's trailing hemisphere. This outer-facing side held a large, concentrated amount of vaporized water. And well, that's it. It honestly doesn't seem like too much up front with NASA confirming something they've known since the 70s. The real kicker, though, is with recent discoveries. This isn't the first time that the Hubble Space Telescope has discovered water vapor on Europa. Throughout the last two decades, the HST has scouted out Europa multiple times. With each of these spectrograph captures, the massive telescope noticed plumes of water vapor. Usually about 200 kilometers in height, these were temporary spurts of water vapor, likely from a heated cache of ice evaporating. However, this recent finding is a bit different. Compared to the temporary plumes found by the Hubble Space Telescope beforehand, Europa's side held much more water vapor in what seems like a much longer time. Not only was there way more water vapor on its trailing hemisphere, but there was also evidence that the collection had been slowly gathering in the years since the telescope last glanced at the planet. And this little extra clue went to support a few more conclusions, which are now the closest to being confirmed as they've ever been. 1. Europa obviously has a relatively large water ocean, sitting close to the surface if it can evaporate and stay that way long term. 2. There's a heating source under the moon's surface, especially considering the weekly highs for Europa are minus 160 degrees Celsius. 3. Something weird's going on. After all, this was found exclusively on the moon's side facing away from Jupiter and not spread evenly around Europa. Now, we've known that there was some kind of water on Europa for roughly two years. In a report from NASA, the agency said that NASA scientists confirm water vapor on Europa. 
researchers found the first confirmed trail of water vapor on Europa's surface from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center through a massive Hawaiian telescope. Anyway, the report was backed by Lucas Paganini, the NASA planetary scientist running the investigation. According to Paganini, the team found that Europa was releasing 2,360 kilograms of water per second. Interestingly, it was just for a few moments at a time, happening infrequently. Nonetheless, it was a fantastic breakthrough, especially considering liquid water is obviously a hard find in the solar system. Otherwise, this wouldn't then be a big deal. But it is, and this recent report just pushes the idea further that this is big. While the team had discovered infrequent bursts of vast amounts of water vapor, the recent HST discovery points towards these bursts being much more common than previously thought. And with that, it's further support towards a liquid ocean being confirmed, and a large one at that. If it wasn't large enough, there wouldn't be the potential for this much water vapor to be released or collected. Speaking of which, the massive amount of vapor suggests that Europa is also hiding a heat source underground. After all, it's impossible to have water vapor without evaporating water. I mean, it's in the name. The same name points towards what could be underground hydrothermal vents. Although nothing's been confirmed yet, it's assumed that Europa likely has heating systems on the Moon's ocean floor. So while it could obviously be a deep-sea volcano or something like that, it's not likely. Remember, Europa is partially known for being the smoothest object in the solar system, a title that it earns despite having a heated ocean. The heat on a moon is generally thanks to a lack of an atmosphere or volcanoes. Europa has the literal opposite. In both cases, the moon has an atmosphere and holds no surface volcanoes. If it did, we'd see many more craters, peaks, valleys, and much more. Instead, we're greeted with nothing but water vapor releasing vents those for which we haven't been able to accurately find the heat source. Still, if it's not volcanoes, it must be something else. Whether a vent, radioactive decay, or who knows what else. All we know is that something is heating Europa's ocean, the same thing that could power life below the surface. Excluding the cool factor of having a subsurface ocean, Europa's water vapor is mainly being researched because it presents an opportunity to find life other than Earth. After all, we're likely dealing with all the necessary components for life, the specific combination of essential elements, water, energy, and the like. We've already confirmed that there must be energy, or else the water wouldn't evaporate. There's no way that water just gets up and wanders off at minus 160 degrees Celsius. Plus, there's obviously water or else there would be no water vapor. So there's also heavy proof that Europa likely has all the essential elements for life, especially since they're commonly found on many of Jupiter's other moons. Europa has many of the necessities for life. Luckily, with the unknowns remaining, there's a big chance these little water vapor discoveries and a few others could lead to some massive discoveries. Don't get it wrong, Europa is full of unknowns. The previously mentioned weird placement of water vapor in the moon's atmosphere, the complete unknowns of an underground ocean, the mysteries of Europa's heat sources, they're all unknowns that might remain that way for a while. However, that's not to say forever. NASA plans to launch the Europa Clipper probe in around three years, hoping to hop into Jupiter's orbit in 2030. This is a huge mission, with Europa Clipper built to answer all of our remaining questions. NASA plans to hijack Europa, determining once and for all if Europa harbors conditions suitable for life. It's fascinating, and NASA's planning to go all out. Even if there's not too much publicity, the instruments and missions for the Clipper are top of the line, ready to put every question to rest. Unlike the incremental boosts to our knowledge of Europa, this mission will blow everything out of proportion. What do you think? Europa is a fascinating moon, and everything we continue to discover about it makes it that much more. Whether it's in finding heavy concentrations of water vapor, proof of water, essential elements, or heat, there's a lot of building towards answering the world's questions once and for all. On top of all that, NASA's Europa Clipper wants to put to rest the question as to whether Europa can and does support life. It's a big question, with what's likely to be a great answer. Do you think it does? Whether or not Europa has life, if it did, how much would it change everything we know? 
Let us know your thoughts below and be sure to check out our other videos for more dives into the realm of space. Until next time.